I put on a stoop. Now, usually a concrete stoop has the forms, but this has the limestone, and we put the flagstone in the middle. So it's a, another way of doing things. I'm going to show you how I did it. Okay, we've been working on this project, replacing all the steps. That part's done. Got most of the brickwork done. And we're going to put a stoop up here. Now, this is the owner's idea, the way we're going to put it up. And if you look at it, he already filled right in around the brick. So, and then he filled all this in that I'm standing on with caps. And it's sitting on an old uh, set of, uh, you know, they bring the steps in and they drop them. Well, let's look at a picture of that. So now we're going to put the stone in. This is going to be a stone stoop. I'm going to show you how we do it. Okay, so it's hard to do this because uh, I'm up on the top of the stoop here. So you're going to see what I'm doing. I'm going to lay this first stone like this. there like that so for the edge I'm gonna put a piece of newspaper over the brick this to hold it down. They were saying to me, Mike, why are you going to put newspaper over the brick? That brick's going to crack if I don't do that. I'll explain as I go. Well, I'm going to explain why I put that newspaper on here. Let's look at a stone porch, and this is like 50 years old. You see that crack going over the side here? And if you go down the whole thing of the porch, you're going to see a little crack. See it? Yeah, I'll continue on. There's a couple reasons for that. Let me see if I could explain this. That whole base at the top, the owner put these caps on top of it to bring it to height. Now the brickwork came up all the way from the bottom like this. So this is separate from this. So I know if there's going to be a crack, it usually it's going to be either here or it's going to be behind a stone. Now they put holes in bricks. The only reason those holes are in bricks is it's cheaper to make and it's cheaper to uh, ship. So what I did was I put this, the paper over the top and I laid my cement. So if it cracks, it's going to crack underneath the stone and not here. That was the whole reason I did that. I'll tell you a little more at the end. We're going to lay our stone. We wet it. And we put this in. Thank you. 
Okay, we're continuing on. The owner's picking out the stone for me, so I don't have to think. It's the one he wants next. It's a used one. That ain't gonna hurt nothing. Let it up a little bit. Drop it in. I gotta cut it. I'll cut it so with my big saw. I could cut it like this. Cleaning up, just get the water bucket, rinse it out over the edges. And put the joints in at the same time. Other guys don't do that. If they don't do that in the area that I live, it'll all start falling out in a few years. So that's the way I do it. Going around the edge, you just keep reaching that sponge out, rinsing it out like that. Get a little piece. So that's it. Over the whole stone. Before we leave, we go over it one more time. That's how you do that. Fitting the stones, you gotta do that. Some stones like this are easy to cut. You just move over by knock it like that. That's good. See that? Good with that. And you can see. Start cementing them. Oh, 
Okay, I've been pre-cutting them. I'm just putting them in. That's it. Okay, now we uh, see we got a good pitch on this. Look at the pitch on this. I don't know if you can see it, but that's level. So we almost got three quarters of an inch pitch. But these stones hold water a little bit. So you don't want anything not being where it's supposed to be. So you got to keep checking it. And you gotta put the joints in, in my area. Probably in Florida you could get away with it. You have to put them in at the same time. The frost will get under it, pop it up. And we don't want that. So we're gonna, it's a hot day. The cement guy who mixed this, mixed a little soupy. It's all his fault, but uh, we'll live with it. As you can see, Water's coming to the top because it's Portland. So what we do is just kind of sponge the water off, and let it dry a little faster because it's going to be 90 some degrees today. And it's going to it's going to dry. It's going to dry quick. So we're getting the excess water off over here. Start to dry. So, start working it. See where it's starting to dry, then you start working it a little bit. So right here you got a little hole from yesterday. Just wet it. Put your finger in there with the stuff. There's another one. We left one early. Rub it in with your finger, just like that. That's from yesterday. Then. Clean it off. No more hole. See, it's starting to stiffen up now. We could go around and get the big stuff. So, uh, you said you had a question to ask me? I do, Mr. Haddock. Uh-huh. If a man is all alone in the woods... A man is all alone in the woods. And there's no woman in there to hear him. And there's no woman to hear him. Is, is he still wrong? Yes, he is. Even if he's right, he's still wrong. Wow. It's just one of those things you have to learn to accept. You're full of wisdom and knowledge, <laughs> and I do appreciate it. So it's stiffening up. I'm just going over the joints a little bit where it might be a hair low. That's all. Just going over the joints to make sure they're not too low. For my last time going over it, see? Just want to make sure that they're not too low. I want water laying in there. Can't help a lot of it, but that's it. Pretty much ready for my last go over. So we're pretty much done. We're gonna come back tomorrow and wash it. Let's take a look under there. See it? How that's flat? You don't want any water standing on anything. And that's the bubble. See that bubble? That would be level. We got almost an inch, an inch pitch on that, about five feet. Okay, we're back the next morning. 
and as you can see it's raining out but it don't look too bad so what I'm gonna do is just wash it off and just use a regular brush so I'm just gonna wet it down like this get the brush and just scrub it like you're doing your kitchen floor that's gonna get all that film off of it you won't have to be using acid or anything Water's running off of it, that's the big deal. So we're going to talk about the job. Is that the best way to do things? I would rather have formed it like I did the concrete and then stick everything on the end and not use the limestone. But the owner wanted the exact same thing so all the railings would go back in place. So that's the way we did it. There's nothing wrong with it, but I have a different perspective on a porch like that. Let's go look at a little porch stoop and you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, let's look at this porch. This is another way to do it. You form it just like if you were going to do uh, the concrete porch and you stick the stones in the thing. Let me show you an example. So if you look closely, you're gonna see an edge here just like when I was doing the concrete. All you do is you form it and then you go along the edge and you put your stones in just like this. Now the thing is when you're doing something like this you can't use a fast drying cement. You got to take your time. So that's it. I have videos out on how to do a stone patio and how to do a sidewalk. You can get some clues off of that. You see me put the newspaper around, that's a little trick. Uh, I use two sand to one Portland, no mortar. Mortar shrinks, it'll fall apart in my area. Two sand to one Portland. That's it, thanks for watching. I'm Mike Haddock. I'll see you next video.